Um, can I ask you a couple more questions if you guys oh, don't mind? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just personally, I just I love hearing this, and it's so important to go with the kids. Would you mind going over like a little more of your childhood leading up up to the war? Like, what what was it like, uh, you know, to be a kid? Both of you guys are from Ohio, right? No, I, I was have from to Wisconsin. Tell you one Wisconsin. Thing. He did not have electricity in his home <laughs> until 1941. Does that tell you what well, kind of life we were, he had as a child? We, uh, my grandfather was a homesteader. Mm -hmm. And when my mother and father were married, uh, my uh, grandfather gave my father and mother uh, a 40-acre parcel at one corner of his land. Yeah. And that's where he, my father was a, a, a carpenter as well as a small farmer. And uh, that's where he built our house and that's where we lived. There was no electricity, no outdoor plumbing, nothing, you know. You uh, drank from a pump and yeah. that was life. Uh, and then of course it was the depression. Mm -hmm. And then when you were nine years old. And when I was nine years old, my father was killed in an automobile accident, mm -hmm. hit by a drunken driver kid and it, it would get the settlement was five hundred dollars. In the meantime his father had been building a farm and they had uh, bought the wood to or they had the wood to build, to the, build the rest of the farm which the neighbors did mm -hmm. but nobody could afford paying the two hundred dollars so they lost the farm. Oh my goodness. So his his mother and the four there were four boys, Ray was the youngest, moved in uh, into a little house that was even less than what they had had. So he had a very meager upbringing. I didn't know it at the time, Howard. No. Yeah, you didn't know any different, right? Right. The real tank, that's the way it looked. Yeah, wow. But, you know, that was a tank where you weren't inside the tank. Well, they, they, they were all there was no up on top. Because of the size of the gun, inside, yeah. the recoil of the gun went all the way back. Wow. So you couldn't have it inside. So you guys sat on the outside? No, we, we well, they we, had little places all around the, oh, on the sides. It, it oh, was okay. a wider than it. We were on, on either side. Mm -hmm. And we, we carried all of our ammunition well, farm in northern Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, went, went to high school. And uh, I, I didn't turn 18 until after several months after I graduated. Uh, and then I was drafted. and. I went into the service. Uh, I went to Camp Grant, Illinois, okay. for my uh, induction, uh, and then I uh, took, uh, got on the. They, they assigned me. They, they gave me three choices. I could try for officers candidate school. This mm -hmm. made me kind of laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't consider yourself officer I didn't material. Myself, but, but th these were, you know, from those tests they give you. Yeah. Before. Or go try for the Air Force, and I said no way, and or they sent me out to California for basic training on anti-aircraft, mm -hmm. and uh, I enjoyed the train ride, four-day train ride, in the sleepers. Mm -hmm. uh, we went all through uh, Nebraska, out through the, the the mountains, and then down past Salt Lake City and out to San Diego, and it was very delightful. And our camp was called Camp Callan. Uh, it was right smack on the on the coast, just uh -huh. just uh, seven miles above La Jolla, California. Okay. So it was a beautiful area to, to have basic training. And uh, once the basic training was over, I had a couple more decisions to make. I had good eyesight, so they mm -hmm. would have sent me on to work on different uh, uh, types of uh, detection for for airplanes. Okay. Uh, or I could go to, go to school, go they study engineering. So they sent me to Camp uh, Compton Junior College for three months, and then the semester opened up at Indiana University. So mm -hmm. they sent me to Indiana University, and I was there for one semester mm -hmm. when the uh, they planned the battle uh, uh, D-Day was D -Day. planned. So mm -hmm. that's when the, the whole thing broke up, nice. all the Army cadets, uh, all the uh, uh, AST people who hadn't finished their terms, it was over for them by that time. Uh -huh. And so we were sent to uh, 14th Armored Division, or the 20th Armored Division, and I transferred to the, I was anxious to get over there. Were you? I was. Okay. Not knowing exactly what was coming in. But some of the things, 
I, I got, I, we, we were left from Camp Shanks, New York, at, through New York Harbor. Okay. I got seasick passing the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> I was sick for seven days. Oh, before you got your sea legs? Before I got my sea legs. Yeah. And then, of course, the, when, the, when you, the troop ships were going over there, you have, you have to avoid the submarine, the German submarine. Yeah, so they went crazy different directions. It took us two weeks to get over to Italy. Wow. When we got into the Mediterranean, another storm hit, <laughs> and I got sick again. So on departure and arrival, when you <laughs> arrival. then uh, it was it's kind of interesting. They uh, we were there until all of our equipment arrived, and they were they assembled it. We lived on a mud hill slide, looking down at a railroad track right outside of uh, Marseille. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when all of our equipment arrived, they loaded everything onto the 40 and 8s with the old small box cars. Okay, 40 and 8s. Which they still have some of them today, I guess. With a 40 and 8, it would, what it meant was you could put 40 humans on it or four horses. Oh, okay. That's what they were known as. And then we went up to the front. And I remember my first uh, greeting from the war was as we were passing one area on the train, the uh, 150 uh, millimeter guns were shooting, and they shot over us towards the enemy. They were behind where we were going. Wow. And they shot over us and it was frightening. I, you know, that's my, my first greeting yeah. to the war. That was started and as I say, we I joined the seventh seventh army, mm -hmm. which was Patch's seventh army, and he held most of everything from Strasbourg uh, on up to uh, well we joined where Patton had his right his, uh, it was about a seventy mile front we were responsible for. And it was just fighting back and forth in small towns. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it very bitter. I can remember one, uh, as we passed, as we were advancing once, there was a, an open field that had uh, something like close to 40 tanks, German tanks that had been hit and burned, and 40 wow. American tanks that had been hit and burned. Yeah. And their bodies were still inside. They were still smoldering. Okay. It was just some, some things, you know, you aren't quite used to yet. Yeah, I, I, I can even imagine. It, uh, it, it, it was, but anyway, yeah, I, if you know the way the artillery works, the infantry and the tanks go first, followed by the artillery. So we're, we're behind the, we aren't actual fighting with infantry. We're, giving support to the infantry and the tanks up ahead. Uh, in, that, in this particular situation, uh, we, we stopped on an embankment just outside of town. We could see the whole town down below us. It was a fairly good sized city, uh, maybe uh, something like Larry or Lorraine. Anyway, we uh, pulled into our position outside of town. The infantry and the tanks were down at the edge of the town. And, uh, it, it was winter, it was cold, and uh, if you knew what we had, we had a sleeping bag. But everybody else, everybody would like to have sort of a comforter or a large blanket also to wrap around themselves. So one of the other guys and I decided we were going to go down uh, to the town and see if we could uh, liberate a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we went down to the outpost, which was right at the edge of town, to the infantry outpost, and we asked the sergeant there, was it all right? We walked down the street a little ways and checked some of the houses. Were they, were, these were empty houses? They're all, ever, but all of the people had evacuated okay. down. And uh, see if we could find the blanket, and uh, we, uh, we went quite a ways. We, and uh, there was a store there, so we went into the apartment above the store, uh, and each got a small blanket we could have. And on the way out of the, out of the, out of the house or the apartment, I saw, noticed a plain set of salt and pepper shakers on the table. So I picked them up and threw them in my pocket and came back with them. Now on the way back out of town, we, we went by the infantry outpost, and a lieutenant was standing there and he said, what yeah, are you doing going through here? He said, town hasn't been taken yet. 
if the Germans are in town. Uh -huh. So he got, a, a, fortunately, no punishment for it, but uh, and he got to keep the blankets, but we were uh, told not to take away anything like that again. The next morning, uh, real early, we started our infantry, or our uh, the infantry got ready to go, and we unleashed our artillery on the town, pretty much leveling a good share of the town. And uh, by the time we got had, had gotten through the town, we had lost about 200 infantry men and several tanks, and there's some better sights to see. But those are some of the little things that the weather at this particular time was bad too. So we uh, it was it was winter months and uh, going on roads half the time going through the mountains you never knew whether you were going to tip over and slide down the side of the mountain or not. Yeah. But uh, then uh, uh, after the Battle of the Bulge, uh, at one point we stopped and what happened was after the Battle of the Bulge, the, the surviving German uh, tank divisions swept down and they were attack, going to attack us in our particular area because they had to show Hitler something. Okay. Because they had been uh, stopped up there, so they were going to come down. And we, we did retreat. We retreated for, uh, I think, seven days. Oh. But then uh, when we started coming back again, we got into a fight. We won a, <laughs> it wasn't a good award for, we fired uh, 4,200. This is now our, our battalion of 12 tanks. Mm -hmm. fired 4,200 uh, 105 howitzer shells in a 24-hour period. It was nonstop. Wow. And they said afterwards, and I did not notice until I read my uh, the history of my division and later, that we killed over 12,000 German soldiers and wounded over 12,000 and stopped the assault. Wow, so you're responsible for that? For stopping that assault, stopping the, another blitzkrieg down there. Yeah. Wow. So the the bulge was was moving out. You were moving their forces to another front where they thought they'd be more successful, yeah, yeah. and that was you. That was us. Yeah. Okay. So we stopped that, and that. Wow. That's when. Uh, after that, then we we went up and joined Patton's Third Army, and he just made the march through Europe. And he, he he went. We, we at one point we went we. Uh, You'd move along the road. You'd never know where you were going, and they would direct the the, the headquarters would direct you to a certain area. Okay. They directed our particular company to one particular area to stay for the night, and uh, that particular night, one of our we had lost one of our lieutenants. Uh, they they were infantry observers. They would be up front with the infantry observing where to fire. Anyway, so they we got our replacement in that night. Was a young, uh, twenty-one-year-old first or second lieutenant from Cincinnati. Oh, okay. He came up. We talked around the, the uh, uh, fireside at night. We had a little fire because we were in safe area, you know. Mm -hmm. The next morning, we all woke up and the, the artillery was coming in at us. There was a German infantry unit company in the woods, just down across the field from us. Wow. And you had that fire going all night. Yeah, we had so we, we fired a few shots back at him, and it got quiet. So they sent this young lieutenant with uh, half a dozen other people over to arrange for because they were waving a white flag. Okay. To over to uh, arrange for their capture, and they shot the lieutenant. So they had waved the white flag of surrender, and a small group of about seven or eight guys. Well, it was a whole company. Oh, a whole company yeah, was going over to Yeah, 200 people, 200 German soldiers. Wow, and then they just shot them. They did. Once somebody, not, you know, it was, probably wasn't the commander, but right. one soldier just shot the lieutenant and killed him. Wow. And uh, he was with us for 12 hours. And uh, that, but, but then they, we did capture the whole infantry company mm -hmm. and uh, turned them over to the other. Wow. Infantry. So, do you remember where you were and what you were doing when you heard of Hitler's death? Were you still in, in the, on the front lines, or do you recall? Uh, or was that not a major event in the... You no, know, that's another thing about being in the service like we were, we not being in headquarters. You really didn't have any idea yeah. where you were or what you 
what was going on with the rest of them. We got the stars and stripes, but that it only had really information on, about personnel people, you know, right. uh, cartoons and stuff like that. So uh, road signs would be about the only thing that gave us any idea what area we were going through. Wow, just road signs. Yeah, road signs. You just make your own guesses. You knew you were, we, we did know when we crossed the Rhine. We crossed the Rhine uh, on, on Easter morning in 1945. Wow. And, and that was our entrance into, into the German enemy. But no, we, that news of something like Hitler, we wouldn't have known about it really. It wasn't, we didn't, just uh, because communication wasn't communication, flowing. Communication uh, with field forces. Now, our headquarters probably knew. Mm -hmm. Sure. Because they had to know, but as far as we are concerned, we just, like a bunch of players following following the leader. Wow. So, uh, I, then do you remember where you were on V-Day? Uh, Victory in Europe Day, I should say, well, V-E yes, Day? yes, then we, you know, uh, that was another kind of interesting situation. Uh, after the, uh, uh, near the end of the war, they, they sent us to different areas, and we were sent up to uh, to a house on a hill, uh, our particular, just our tank. Uh -huh. We were, at that time, I think we were eight or nine people, and uh, they said, you can stay here till you hear from us, because there's nothing going to happen now. So we went in the house, and all we, we chased the, the people. The, the, if, are you familiar with the kind of farms that they had back then? The house was here, and no. they had a long hallway where they kept their hay and stuff, and then okay. on the other end was the barn. Okay, I didn't know. So we, we chased connected. the people that lived in the house, out of the house, so we all got to go in our bed for all the first time. Uh huh. <laughs> in the morning we woke up and there were four German soldiers sleeping in the front room with all their arms. They were, they, they, 